This could be your last chance to buy a Cayman for a reasonable price. Prices recovered fiercely after last year's dip and even outperformed the market. Given that the new Cayman will be fully electric, it's not unthinkable that we're close to a market bottom. In this video you'll get updated on the latest price developments in the Cayman market, how they compare to the rest of the market and what it could mean for future prices. Let's have a look at some price trends. Starting with the 987 generation, split by the 987.1 and .2, and the base and the S models, we can see fairly stable prices. .1 base models didn't change during last year. .1 S's are down by 9%, .2 base models by 15%, and .2 S models are up by 9.2%. Now this doesn't look like a stable price development, but it is. The 987 Cayman market is extremely small, so these price trends are heavily influenced by the specific cars that are for sale at a given moment. For example, high mileage cars push prices down and low mileage cars push prices up. I therefore looked at more detailed breakdowns that involve different mileage categories, but also for example the transmission type, and found that especially base models were extremely stable during last year, and that S models only lost a few percentage points. I think it's a little bit too detailed to discuss all of those graphs and different breakdowns. So let's just work with the average of the 987 segment, that is minus 3.7%. Now the diehard 987 fans must have noticed that I missed one model, the R. This again is an extremely small market that doesn't have a reliable price trend. Looking a little bit deeper into this, I found that the low mileage examples, so the ones with less than 10,000 miles, came down by quite a bit, but that the ones with more than 26,000 miles have been stable during last year. Next up is the 981, but I would first like to draw your attention to an important announcement that I made in the previous video. Last week I shared with you that I partnered up with Sotheby's Motorsport, a new online auction platform for vehicles priced between 100,000 and approximately 1 million dollars. The platform launched in August and is off to a great start. They already sold some special cars like this SF90, 599 Alonso Edition and MC20. Their current auctions are equally impressive and might even interest you if you're in the market for a Cayman. Sure, you could go for that 718 GT4, but did you also know that an R8 V10 Plus could belong to the possibilities? You can bid now on this R8 V10 Plus that has only done 13,000 miles, and this means that it's one of the lowest mileage cars you will find, if you can find one at all. Facelift versions like these are quite rare, since supply tends to fluctuate between 2 and 6 cars. If you visit the auction page, you'll find that the first owner ticked some desirable options, like the full leather package and Alcantara headliner. Compared to the 718 GT4, the R8 is of course a bit older. Sotheby's Motorsport however raises the bar on vehicle disclosure. On the auction page you can access a full third party inspection report to give you a peace of mind. If this got you interested, head over to sotheby'smotorsport.com, register as a bidder and start bidding. Back to the 981 market now. Over here we have the prices for the base, S and GTSs. Base models are down by 4%, S's by 11.7% and GTSs by 2.2%. And in monetary terms these are drops of 2, 7 and 1.7 thousand dollars. This is an extremely good result. We can see that prices recovered strong after last year's winter dip and that especially base and GTS prices have been flat. They didn't lose more than $2,000 during last year. The decrease in the S market is slightly larger, but this drop is a bit of an overestimation due to a change in the market composition. Correcting for this, we arrive at a decrease of 5%, so this will be the number that we use going forward. Even if we correct these trends for inflation, we can see that S and base prices hardly changed. There are not many cars to which this does apply. Now the GT4s were excluded from the previous graph, because I posted a full-fledged market update for those three weeks ago. However, if we take a quick look, we can see that prices didn't change. Again, a strong result. Moving on to the 718 market, we can see that base and GTSs lost 4.7% during last year, and that this is only 0.1% for the S's. In monetary terms, we're looking at $3,000 for the base, basically nothing for the S, and approximately $4,000 for the GTSs. I didn't include the thieves because the price trends for those is very unreliable. There are only a handful of them for sale, so I recommend that you take the average of the 718 market and use that for the thieves. Now looking at the trends, we can see again that they're very strong. Yes, base and GTS trends are pointing down, but the slope of the line is only small. 
The trend in the ass market is a bit different. Prices increased during the last 3 months, but this increase is the result of a change in market composition. Correcting for this, the year over year price change arrives at minus 5%. So we'll use this number going forward. Moving on to the 4 liter models, we can see that GT Force lost only 2.5% and that this is 8.7% for the 4 liter GTSs. And these percentages amount to roughly 3.6 and 10 and a half thousand dollars. Again, for a full update on the GT4 market and also the GT4 RS market for that matter, please check the market update of a few weeks ago. All right, we covered many graphs and numbers, so let's summarize what we've seen so far. Over here we have all the year-over-year -year price changes for the Caymans. On average they lost 4.2%, but as you can see, this average is pulled down by the 4 liter GTSs. Without those, Caymans lost 3.7%. Now it's not a complete surprise that the 4 liter GTS has lost the most. It's the newest Cayman and it tends to have the lowest mileage. And as we all know, you tend to lose the most when you drive the car out of the showroom. Now looking at the other Caymans, we can see that most lost between 3.7 and 5%. Fairly similar rates for cars that differ so much in age. The GT4 stick out on the positive side, something that GT cars tend to do. Now on a standalone basis these numbers don't mean so much. We need to compare them to the changes in the market. So let's do that with the following plot. Over here we have the year over year price changes on the horizontal axis for most cars for which I'm tracking the prices and the number of cars to which these changes apply on the vertical axis. This reveals that the average decrease during last year was 9.3%. The Cayman market lost only 4.2% and this is far less than the market average. It even belongs to the top 25% cars that lost the least. Past price behavior is of course no guarantee for future price behavior, but it does show that Cayman prices were exceptionally strong. You see, the car market experienced above normal depreciation rates during 2022. Cayman prices also decreased during 2022, but less severe than the market. Moreover, they displayed a stronger recovery during 2023. This development can be perfectly illustrated by looking at an extreme example. This example is inspired by a viewer's comment on the GT4 market update video. The viewer referenced the AMG GTC and that made me compare the trend of the Cayman to the one of the AMG GTC. The result is truly astonishing and shows the strength in the Cayman market. Over here we have in blue the trend for the AMG GTCs and this shows that they lost 17.8% or $25,000 during last year, a multiple of what the Caymans lost. You can see that the GTCs dropped from 718 GT4 price ranges to 981 GT4 price ranges. As we just discussed, this results from a steeper slope downward and from a lack of recovery in 2023. Now the aim of this graph is not to put the GTCs in a bad daylight. In fact, they start to look like a little bit of a bargain. The trend for the higher mileage cars clearly flattened. No, the aim is to show how strong the Cayman prices are and how the dynamics differ for some other fairly popular cars. Now prices are of course the most obvious thing to look at when we want to assess the market strength and the bottoming potential. But also when we look at other market aspects we can confirm that the Cayman market is strong. Over here we can see the development of the carried over inventory for the Caymans and the 991 Carreras. The latter ones are included as a reference point. So what do these numbers mean? Let's look at an example. Last August, 18% of the 97 Caymans that were for sale were also for sale 3 months ago. So this means that the number tells us something about the speed at which the Caymans are selling. Looking at the development over time, we can see a few things. The numbers are very low for the 981. Approximately 20% or less is for sale for 3 months or more and this is in absolute terms not very much. This turns out to be the most popular generation. It also has my personal preference. The numbers for the 718 and 987 also tend to be low. They're after all below the ones of the 991 Carreras, but are more aligned to the market than the 981. Second, we can see that the trends are decreasing, something that could hint to an increase in popularity. This, in turn, helps to support prices. Supply is limited after all. So. Is this your last chance to buy a Porsche Cayman for a reasonable price? Let's be honest here. No one can predict the future and past price behavior is no guarantee for future price behavior. 
Having said that, I think that the Cayman bottoming costs are very strong. Year over year price decreases are much smaller than the market average. Caymans decreased less when the market tanked and recovered better when the market returned to more normal depreciation rates. On top of this comp that they still seem to be extremely popular. We saw that they're selling relatively quickly. All of this is of course just based on historical trends. The case for a bottom becomes even stronger if we also factor in that the next Cayman will be fully electric. Now in practical terms this conclusion means that buying a Cayman right now doesn't guarantee that you won't lose any money on it. If we could be 100% certain that this was a bottom, we would probably all buy a Cayman. Prices of course could still slide downhill. Yet, based on the analysis that we did in this video, I think it's extremely unlikely that we will see major price drops in this market. And with that we arrived at the end of this video. Now if you enjoyed this data driven way of analyzing car markets, but would like to see a video for a different car, head over to my channel. Over there you'll find market updates for a large variety of cars. Can't find the car you're looking for? Let me know the name of the car by commenting it down below in the comment section. Once there are enough requests for a certain car, I'll make a video about it. As always thank you for watching and I hope to see you next week for a new video.